What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the brand new 15 inch M3 MacBook Air. Are you subscribed yet? Probably not. We are on the road to 5,000 subscribers, so be sure to subscribe clicking that bell icon to be notified when any of my new videos go live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So I do want to quickly mention the spec for the model that I'm testing in today's video. So this is the entry 15 inch model, which means it comes with the M3 chip, which has an eight core CPU, a 10 core GPU, eight gigabytes of unified memory, along with 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. As always, you'll find the full spec for this model down below in this video's description. So in typical fashion, I started off by running a number of different Geekbench versions and starting off with Geekbench 4's CPU test, I got a single core score of 7,482 with multi-core scores of 32,152. I then ran the OpenCL compute test through Geekbench 4 and got scores of 115,711. And when it comes to running the metal compute test through Geekbench 4, I got scores of 111,117. Hey, something's telling me that you are not yet following me on my Instagram. So click the card in the top right corner to go and check out my Instagram. The next testing application which I ran was once again from Geekbench, however this time from their slightly newer version, Geekbench 5. So when it comes to running the CPU test, I got single core scores of 1676 with multi-core scores of 8140. When it comes to running the OpenCL compute test, I got scores of 29032. However, running the Geekbench 5 Metal Compute Test, I got scores of 33,140. I then ran the latest version of Geekbench, Geekbench 6. Now, when running the latest version of Geekbench, I got CPU single core scores of 3,021, along with multi core scores of 11,675. I once again ran both compute tests and starting off with the OpenCL test, I got scores of 30,534, but when it comes to running the metal test, I got higher scores of 47,494. So I wanted to further test the CPU portion of the M3. So I ran a number of different CPU intensive benchmarks. Now starting off with Cinebench R20, I got a score of 2,546. I then ran Cinebench R23. Now Cinebench R23 is quite good as it gives us both a single and multi-core score along with working out the ratio between the two. So for this test, I got a single core scores of 1,895 with multi-core scores of 9,000, which indeed gives us a ratio of 4.75. I then ran the latest version of Cinebench, Cinebench 2024, which scores similarly to Cinebench R23. Now when running the 2024 version, version of Cinebench, I got single core scores of 137, multi-core scores of 546, which gives us a ratio of 4 on the dot. I then wanted to test the GPU portion of this M3 chip. Of course, this is the full fat M3 chip, which has a 10 core GPU and not eight like we've seen with the entry 13 inch MacBook Air. So I then ran GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests, which vary from both higher and lower levels of intensity that are ran both on and off screen. Now in the interest of saving time, I have calculated the average across each category, but as always, I will show you each individual result. So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 109.77 frames per second, whereas for the lower level intensive tasks, I got an average of 261.13 frames per second. So I wanted to further test the GPU portion of the M3 in this 15 inch MacBook Air. So I ran a number of different tests from 3 Mark. Now starting off with their wildlife test, as always, it maxed it out, with it also averaging 60 frames per second with this test. Test. So I then ran the wildlife stress test and when running this test I got a higher score of 10,020 with a lower score of 10,020 which I had kind of expected given that we got similar scores with the 13 inch with its 8 core GPU. 
So I then stepped it up and ran the Wildlife Extreme test and when running this test this MacBook Air scored 7819 with it also averaging 46.8 frames per second which is quite a steady increase over the 41.8 frames per second we saw on average with the entry 13 inch MacBook Air. So I then ran the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. Now when running this test, I got a higher score of 7,690 with a lower score of 5,871. I think the interesting thing here is regardless of if you're using the 13 inch or the 15 inch models, that the decrease in performance was around 25%. As with the 13 inch MacBook Air, its highest score was 6,984, with its lowest score being 5,406. I then ran the Solar Bay test from 3D Mark to see what the ray tracing capabilities of this 15 inch MacBook Air would be like. Now, when running this particular test, I got a score of 12,287, with an average frame rate of 46.7 frames per second. I also ran the solar bay stress test on this 50 inch macbook air and got higher scores of 12,230 with lower scores of 7,994. And whilst the decrease in performance of this nature would be quite shocking, you can see that this was only after the third run as from the fourth run and each consecutive run after that, it pretty much averaged around 10,000 points. So it seems that with the first initial test, the MacBook Air gave it its all, building up quite a lot of heat. And so after that, it started to throttle. And once it hit the fourth run, it then had enough thermal overhead that it was able to increase the performance. And as you can see, after the fourth run, it steadied off with it averaging around 10,000 points. I also wanted to see how the SSDs in this 15 inch MacBook Air would perform. So I ran the Aja disk speed test and the high speeds that this MacBook got was write speeds of 2434 megabytes per second with read speeds of 2363 megabytes per second. I also ran the Blackmagic disk speed test and got write speeds of 2069.4 megabytes per second and read speeds of 2833.8 megabytes per second. I then ran a Wi-Fi speed test and got download speeds of 253 megabits per second and got upload speeds of 94.9 megabits per second. I then ran NovaBench 2. Now NovaBench is a good general benchmark as it tests all aspects of the machine from the CPU and the GPU along with the system memory and storage. Now when running this particular test I got a score of 2066. I also ran the V-Ray test and got scores of 5,952. And when running the Antutu HTML browser benchmark, I got scores of 91,233. I also ran Speedometer 2.0 and the highest score I got was 693. And when running the latest version of Speedometer, Speedometer 3.0, the highest score I got was 36.4. I then timed a number of different renders through Blender. Now starting off with the classroom scene, rendering using the CPU, it took 12 minutes and 22 seconds to complete, whereas it took two minutes and 40 seconds to complete when it come to using the GPU. And when I rendered using the CPU, but using the newest version of Blender, Blender 4.0, it took eight minutes and 56 seconds to render. And unfortunately, when it come to rendering using the GPU, it would not complete it as it had ran out of system memory. This is not a shock as we saw the same with the 13 inch MacBook Air, along with the other iMac models, which come with eight gigabytes of unified memory as standard. I also took note of the times taken to render the BMW scene using the CPU, and it took five minutes and 39 seconds to complete but when it come to using the GPU it did it much faster with it taking one minute and nine seconds and when running Blender 4.0 to render the BMW scene using the CPU it took four minutes to complete whereas it took 43 seconds to complete using the GPU I then ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider gaming benchmark at native resolution that's 2880 by 1864 and when the graphic settings were set to high I got an average frame rate of 18 frames per second with it scoring 2,846. When the graphic settings was dropped to medium, it then scored 3,021 with it also averaging 19 frames per second. When the resolution was lowered to 2560 by 1600, it then scored 3,335 with it also averaging 22 frames per second. 
When the graphics settings were lowered to medium, it then scored 3437 with it also averaging 22 frames per second. I lowered the resolution down to 1920 by 1200 and when the graphics settings were set to high, it this time scored 4925 with it now averaging 32 frames per second. But when the graphics settings was once again lowered to medium, it then scored 5047 averaging 33 frames per second. And finally, lowering the resolution down to 1280 by 854 it managed to score 6530 with it averaging 43 frames per second and when the graphic settings was lowered to medium it this time scored 6919 with it now averaging 45 frames per second I then opened up Logic Pro and then tried to run as many tracks as I could from the Logic Pro benchmark and I got the exact same score here compared to the 13 inch model with them both being able to run 89 tracks before the system overloaded. I then ran some further gaming benchmarks from Unigen and I went running the Heaven test at 1710 by 1107 I got an average frame rate of 76.6 frames per second with it scoring 1930 and when the resolution was lowered down to 1440 by 900 it this time averaged 93 frames per second with it scoring 2344 and when running the Valley benchmark at 1710 by 1107 it this time averaged 71.5 frames per second with it also scoring 2,992 and when the resolution was lowered to 1440 by 900 it this time averaged 82.8 frames per second with it scoring 3,463. I then used Lightroom to enhance and denoise 100 GH5 raw images. Now with this MacBook Air it took 1 hour and 1 minute and 46 seconds to complete. So it was great to see a little improvement here over the 13 inch model which took 1 hour and 12 minutes to complete. I then took note of the time taken to export some projects through Final Cut Pro to H.264 with background rendering turned off. Now the time taken to export the Full HD project took 45 seconds but when exporting the 4K project it took 2 minutes and 52 seconds to export. And then we've got the battery life. You'd be pleased to find out that this MacBook Air managed to last 4 hours and 10 minutes, which is a slight increase over the 13 inch model, with the 13 inch lasting 3 hours and 54 minutes. But I have to admit that with the 15 inch model, I was able to get a lot more tasks completed in that same time period. So there you have it, that'll be it for today's video. Of course, if you are new around here and would like to see what it's like to play a handful of games on this system, then be sure to subscribe clicking the bell icon to be notified of when a new video goes live. If you'd like to see what videos I'm currently working on then be sure to follow me on X and Instagram to see those updates. But once again thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care and have a good one.